Yes, so uh, I'm Charlotte Kirk. I'm a British filmmaker, actress, producer, writer, and um, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and when uh, when did your creative journey start? That's always really interesting. Were you uh, looking up at the silver screen as a as a child and thinking, "Oh, I want to do that," or when did that start for you? Pretty much, yes. Th there wasn't really a defining moment where I was like, "Oh." I really want to be an actor. This is what I want to do. It was just kind of a gradual thing. I, I, I've always loved performing uh, in in um, elementary school and secondary school. I, I just always just loved the performing. Um, and I think the more I understood movies and the stage and filmmaking, it just grew and grew and grew, really. But it's always been in me. I think, I think my dad is a frustrated actor deep down, to be honest. I think really? I get it from him. He's not an actor at all, but I think I think I get it from him. Yeah. <laughs> what What makes you say that though? What What about your your father? Sort of exudes he that artistic loves, approach. Well, he's great at accents. He'll just like we'll be having a conversation, and he'll just roll off an Irish accent. I'm like, Dad, how do you do that? It's so good. Or a Scottish accent, or even American. I have to say. So anytime I have an audition, or I'm or there's a, a role that's like a american or, or whatever i'm like dad help me out here so he's amazing at accents he just performs he just loves to he loves movies he loves he loves like characters and studying people and kind of what actors need to do really um so actually in the last couple of films i have given him a, a cameo him and my mum <laughs> really so, yeah yeah but you can see them um my mum was in duchess my dad was in the Reckoning, uh, and my mum, and my mum was in The Lair and The Reckoning as well. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Did they have a yeah, blast? Yeah, they always, always, there's always, every time I'm, I'm, um, if I'm obviously producing the film, that's a lot easier. I say, right, do you want a, do you want a cameo role? Do you want to walk in? They're like, absolutely. When are we flying out? It's very cute. <laughs> that's so cool. That, I love that you're giving back to them too. You're giving them that chance to, you know, experiment yeah. and experience that. I think being on a set is just amazing, like actor. If you're an actor, which is obviously the best place you can be, but even if you're not an actor, just the experience of being on set is pretty electrifying. So, uh, um, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What uh, I know I'm kind of jumping through questions, but what was your first on set experience like? Because that is a crazy surreal moment in any actor's life when those lights come on and the camera's put in front of you. Oh my gosh. My first role was a walk-on part. It was called Black Dog, Red Dog with James Franco. I think he was producing it. Um, and it was literally like, a, I, walk, I think I was a secretary. I walk in, I give someone papers, and then I walk out again. And you know, you're just trying really, really hard just to, just to make it something. <laughs> and, yeah, it was in New York and... Yeah, I just just arrived to the states actually, and um, and it's just it's just surreal, isn't it? It's like that was so many years ago, but it was such a incredible, powerful moment for me. Yeah, yeah. and I mean that's a huge <laughs> move as well. You moved to a different country to. I know, you know, yeah. So when I finished drama school here in the UK, hmm. um, someone said to me, Charlotte, if you want to be an actor, go to the states. So I didn't think twice. I packed up my bags and um, took a trip to LA, came back and went to New York. I mean, originally I moved to New York for six months and then I then went to LA. And, and why, uh, why New York? What was the, what was that experience like compared to, you know, the Los Angeles approach? Well, I, I, I connected with um, an agency out there. So they helped sponsor my O1 visa um and they got me some like commercial work and stuff like that and then I kind of realized being there a few months and that I've got to go to LA as <laughs> well it's all happening so then and I packed up my bags went to LA but yeah I was like 19 didn't know anyone uh, just just it's like okay I, I just got to do it I, I didn't think twice and yeah. um yeah it's crazy really it is crazy like what would my life would have been like if I didn't go to the states but I do not regret it for a second do not regret it. I think it's the best, the best thing I ever did. Well, I would mm. think, I mean, you and I are about the same age and at 19, that's a very pivotal time, right? So, you know, it's, it's the perfect time to make those switches to, to pivot yeah. and go experience something new. I'm curious what changed in you from, you know, 
being 19 in the UK to being 19 in, in Los Angeles? Was there a culture shift? I mean, what was that like for you personally? I loved what the US could offer me, the opportunities that I don't think the UK, they could have gave me, but I didn't, I, I just had my hopes and my heart set on the US and I said, and that's why I was there. Um, I, I just think there was just so much more opportunity there. Um, I I felt like there in in the UK it's it, it's maybe not so much now but it's kind of I was told there's a closed system here that it's very hard to get those doors open and and if you didn't go to RADA or you didn't speak a certain way it's just it, there's still quite a class system here in the UK right so in the US I think anything's possible right anything anyone can be anything and that's what I love about the US the opportunity and um that's 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 what I loved and I went there and, and it embraced me like absolutely that they didn't care it's just about the talent and um yeah now here I am <laughs> yeah look I mean look at you now it it's uh god looking at it, an actor's career is so jarring right because it could be yeah you know, know, instant spotlight after, you know, a couple of weeks in town, and then it could be instant or not instant, but, you know, going to the spotlight years later. So when yeah. you were 19, you were starting this out. Did you have a goal in mind? Not to say that every actor should have, you know, a timeline or something, because we all know that's insane. Uh, but did yeah. you have goals for yourself when you initially, you know, came out here and, and began your career? I just wanted to do movies. Well, not movies, but TV, stage, whatever, really. I just wanted to just act and just be in good project, whatever that entailed. Um, and now I have goals. Now I think I'm more laser focused, like, you know, hindsight is a great thing, right? Okay, this is where I was. This is where I want to be. I, I, I think that, okay, where do I want to be 20, 30 years from now? Think of someone who I really want to be, like, inspired to be like, and then backtrack from their, their career. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, what I'm doing now um but back then it was just I just want to just want to work really and learn and make mistakes and then learn from my mistakes and get better and better and um I was 19 <laughs> as a child <laughs> <laughs> I know isn't that crazy to think about at the time you're thinking I'm an adult I'm making this decision I'm going to go do this but we we're still kids into our early 20s essentially <laughs> absolutely and um yeah, I mean, a lot of people say, "Really, you moved to the states when you were that young?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just, I just got up and did it." I think you have to. I think yeah. you have to, like, whatever field you're in, you know, if it's entertainment or whatever industry you want to, you know, you want to be in. I think you have to just go at it a hundred percent. Like that would be advice for anyone. Like, whatever you want to do. I didn't even have a backup plan. That wasn't even a plan B for me. Well, I was like, okay, I'll go to the States. Maybe one day I'll move back to the UK, but I have to do this. Like, I have to. I have no other choice. So there, I don't have a choice but to do this. I think I think that's what you need to do to really achieve what you want to achieve to succeed is I have to. There's no if babies. Yeah. When did you declare yourself... I am an actor. This is what I'm going to do. When did you sit down and say, you know what? No, this is it. No backup plans. I'm going in, you know, full force. When did that happen for you? When I went to the States. Mm. When I went. Um, because obviously I went to drama school here and then I stayed here for a while. And then I thought, well, I'm going to the States. I don't know anyone. I have no friends, no family. Like, this is it. This is the only reason why I'm going. But pretty much just, just. <laughs> go in full steam ahead and um yeah i think that that was my defining moment was just getting on that plane and just going to yeah, yeah. and you did mention briefly uh before you know looking at people you admire and then backtracking their career to see you know how you can align with that who did you look up to as a as a kid as you were watching tv movies stage i mean who were your performance heroes it it changed it has changed it evolves um i, I as a kid I adored uh, Gone with the Wind, Vivian Lee. I love that period. I love I love the golden age of Hollywood, the 
the way they performed, the way they dressed, the way just everything about it was just amazing and glamorous and just, oh, I love, love that era. Um, Marlon Brando is one of my most favourite actors. I think he's the greatest actor that ever lived, ever. He's incredible. Um, but then, like, for myself, if I say, who, who do I inspire to be? I'd say someone like Nicole Kidman. I think she's absolutely incredible with her yeah. own got her own production company she makes her own projects she's just like i love the film she her choices it's very diverse all of the roles she chooses are all very different mm. i think she's kind of someone i'd inspire to be definitely yeah oh i that's i love those answers have you had a chance to meet <laughs> uh nicole at all no no i met so i on, on my last film i worked with stephanie beecham who's a legend, who had worked with Marlon Brando. And as soon as she told me that, I was like, oh, my God, wait, tell me what was it like, what kind of person, just tell me everything about him. <laughs> I need to know everything. <laughs> and she was just like, yeah, he was just incredible. He's just like one of a kind. She was like, yeah, I think it was Ava Gardner. She said, yeah, she taught me light. She was on the, from that era. So she yeah. was like, yeah, she taught me how, how lighting works and my good side, my bad side, and just... Just the incredible golden age of Hollywood. Ah, oh, that's what I love. Oh God, I I love those experiences when you meet somebody and they you know they've worked with X, Y, or Z, and you just immediately yes. like tell me everything you know. I've been, lucky, I've been lucky enough to meet some incredible people. Like I I've met Al Pacino a number of times. Who is an uh, and they say never meet your 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 idol. You're going to be disappointed, but mm -hmm. I absolutely wasn't. He was an absolute gem just an actor's actor you know loves other actors just incredible with his you know he's just amazing isn't it one of the kind as well Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh and you know what what did you take away from those experiences meeting al you know what what was what was something you took away from just being in that space with that hero i think like some of the great the greats i've met they all have a common tra uh, trait that is they're so they're so in the moment when they speak with you. They don't, it doesn't matter how much is going on around them, how many people want to talk to them, they're talking to you and you know it and that's it. The other week I was at an event and I met Emma Thompson and she just blew me away. She, there was just all these people around her, oh, can I talk to you, can I talk to you? And I just, we were just talking and she was just, it was like she was looking into my soul. I mean, I, I, it was just an incredible experience. I like cried afterwards. It was just amazing. And she was just so sweet. Absolutely. Like, like she's like an angel. She was just the most nicest. Just, a, oh, I just, it was an incredible experience. <laughs> and, but, but her person, it wasn't like I was blown away because, you know, starstruck. It wasn't like that. It was just her. You know, I, I wasn't looking at her as the actress, Emma Thompson, or it was just her, you know, her soul, the way she spoke to me. It was yeah. just incredible. Yeah. And that's like that's what makes you just incredible actors that you're just so you're there, you're in the moment and you're present. And that's really important, obviously, as you know, as an actor. You've got to be in the moment, otherwise you're not gonna be truthful. So yeah, yeah, that's what I they all have this this incredible electricity of just being there and you know they're with you. It's incredible. Getting like goosebumps thinking about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, I'm just thinking, yeah, the only, yeah, the actor that I would have loved to have met is Brando, and that's not going to happen. But uh, <laughs> there will be others. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, with how much you're working and how much you're putting out there, it's you're yeah. bound to run into, you know, several other heroes you've looked up to, you know, or at the absolutely. very, very least, get to work with them. Right? That's that's the hope. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and you said you, you know. You didn't have any backup plans career wise, but looking back now, what would you do if you couldn't act? I know it's a horrible question to ask, but what's what's something you'd be open to um, exploring as a career opportunity? Hmm. I would probably work with animals, dogs. I say I want to rescue a bunch of animals, but there's no money in that, is there really? So I don't know how I'd actually survive. So maybe I'd be like a banker and then I'd look after animals on the side. <laughs> or just become a homeless try and look after all the dogs. That's kind of like my, yeah, my passion. I just love, love, love dogs. So anything to do with dogs or animals, I just, yeah, want to rescue them all. Mm. Oh. See, and you get <laughs> 
<laughs> you have your puffer sitting right behind you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Always there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. At one stage, I was like, oh, maybe like being a detective would be really cool. It's just like, oh, that's just... I don't know though. That would be tougher. I think, like, if if you don't crack the case, I think that would be pretty. I don't know if you could get over that. You know, the hang ups on that. Like, just. Yeah. I don't know. I think that'd be pretty cool though. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a a fun movie following a detective who's had one case that's still not solved. <laughs> yeah, and then they, they <laughs> up on it. I, I just couldn't. It would drive you crazy, wouldn't it? Like, I I could have done this, and I, I think I've got a bit of OCD anyway. I'm like, oh, I don't think I would just go mad. Like, I'd have to, have to do it. I don't know. <laughs> like, being creative helps that as well, for sure. Like, when I'm creative and I'm reading or I'm performing or whatever it is, that just, I think they say that, don't they? They say, like, being in the moment is when you're being creative. Mm. Like, anyone, like, it, whatever you're doing, if you're, whatever it is, even if you're reading, you know, you're, you're just, your imagination works and you switch off and you go somewhere else. And that's just like so therapeutic and calming. I love it. Do you do? Uh, cool. I mean, do you do a lot of lot of reading? Do you paint? What else do you do creatively outside of uh, performance that allows well, you to do that? I'm I'm also writing. Um, so the last few projects I wrote as well, um, which is which is which is great. I mean, I've co-written, so I haven't actually written anything on my own yet. Uh, I've co-written with the director, Neil Marshall, um, who's a fabulous, fabulous writer and a great, I think we're a good team when it comes to writing because he comes at it like a, you know, director, producer, and I come at it like, a, like an actor. So it's it's a good, it's a good combination, actually. Um, writing, uh, what else do I do creatively? I don't know, really. I guess, I mean, I read, that's not really being creative, is it? just I don't paint my mum paints though um she's really good um maybe I need to get a few more hobbies <laughs> <laughs> well it's always a weird question to ask any any performer because you do you know you might have a bunch of other things you do but you don't realize that it stimulates your creativity yeah. right yeah like, I totally count reading though as being creative because you are imagining that world and yeah you know exactly. living in it yeah. Yeah. It's not like the best feeling is when you, you start reading a script and you just can't put it down. Like that's just the best. When you actually get sucked into a story or a movie, right? Or you're watching a movie and you just get, oh my God, I watched the um the Spielberg film. What's it called? Oh, the uh the Fablemans. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh my really? god. Really? I, I still I haven't got, seen it. <laughs> oh I got sucked into that story. That was amazing. Really, really enjoyed that movie. Because that just took you somewhere. It just took you into another world, into another era. All the performances were incredible. It's just, and you knew it was about Spielberg, so it just had all these layers to it. It was absolutely amazing. Loved that film. All yeah, right. I need to. I need to watch it. <laughs> it's it's on the list, but I have not pulled the trigger yet. <laughs> it's oh just my sitting God. there. Yes, watch. <laughs> so many good ones out. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Sorry. I got lost in all the movies I haven't seen yet that came out last year and feeling like a f utter cinematic failure <laughs> <laughs> instead time. of watching the Don't same worry. show. <laughs> yeah. You get hung up on a show, don't you? And there's so many great shows out there as well. So. Yeah. Oh, so Which, many good ones. I mean, speaking of, it doesn't have to be a show, but you know, you with everything you're doing, with everything you've been building over the last few years, what helps you decompress from your long day of, you know, whether it be writing, acting, sending in self tapes, taking care of the pupper and running around? I mean, <laughs> that would, I guess that yeah. could be just a decompression period. But uh, yeah, what do you, what do you do to, to relax? It keeps you satiated. Definitely watching, um, watching TV, TV shows or films for sure. That just, I just switch off. Uh, definitely. Um, taking my dog for a walk. Um, just doing something that has nothing to do with the business, which is hard because it just kind of creeps up on you, right? It's like, oh, that would be good. Oh, that's really inspiring. But then you just got to make it and just, just okay, ground yourself, go back. I'm switching off. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> do that. You're creative and you're you're constantly 
you know, it's it's tough. It's tough to switch yeah. off. It uh, in a way, it just it takes over your life uh, in the best and the worst ways when it should and when it shouldn't. You know, it's uh, yeah. it, it's almost like you have to journal your way out of it, to get out of that mindset, and then yeah. go about your daily life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's not the creativity that, that I need to switch off from. It's all the admin stuff as well that goes with it. Mm. That's quite, um, oh, I hate all that kind of stuff. Because obviously producing as well is, is quite oh, tedious. But yeah. I, I enjoy it, I enjoy it. But it's also, it is stressful as well. Very stressful. You know, putting together a film is, oh, is, is a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, you you have, what is the, the name of your production company again? If you would mind reminding our listeners. Yeah. Um, Scarlet, Scarlet Productions. Mm-hmm. Scarlet is the name of my character in Duchess. So that's why it's called Scarlet. And it's also a really badass name for a production company. So thank you. <laughs> you like symbolic as well. So, yes, yeah, Scarlet Productions. So that will be my third film that I co wrote, produced, and starred in. So, but that that's kind of like the special, the special one that I'm. That's been my pet project. That's coming out this year, and I'm super excited about. I'm oh, I excited. I cannot wait to see. It. I wish. Uh, I know you had a talk with my buddy uh, Brian Garner on his Be More Super podcast a few months ago. Yes. So I, I sometimes <laughs> wish that he and I lived in the same country so we can go see these movies together. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Yes. Oh, so good. Um. Well, one of the um sound designers that watched the film the other week he said um it's a split between guy ritchie and tarantino i was like i will take that absolutely <laughs> oh, that, the, the highest compliment for a crime film right <laughs> a crime film exactly exactly very much very much like well i mean it, we conceived it as a female scarface so it's pretty badass i mean yeah we we, we our expectations we, we <laughs> they were pretty high i know <laughs> But you have to, right? You have to have high expectations. Otherwise, you know, shoot for the stars and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And uh, I do want to go back to, you know, your producer hat. What is your average day like now? I do want to talk about your admin because you are working your butt off and people need to hear what it takes to produce a film. So what is your day to day like providing that admin? So it depends what kind of producing you do. So um, I'm not the line producer. So you have kind of the head producer. Um, and then you have the line producer that puts the whole budget, the whole film together. Um, and I'm kind of working alongside them. So I'm helping bring in equity. I'm helping with the tax credit. So having a tax credit where you shoot is very beneficial. So a lot of paperwork involved. Thank God I have nothing to do with that paperwork, but I'm kind of there putting all the logistics together to kind of manage overseeing. And then um, my line producer, that's absolutely great. She, she, puts everything together and then you get put the it's just so much paperwork you can't even imagine it's like you know um yeah you've got the tax credit you've got the investor contracts you've got um the production company that um the local production so you've got the production company here then you've got the loan out production company what you're the local production company where the, the country you're filming in um and then you've got that's not even that's just the base then you've got to obviously cast it then it's just so much so much but you just got to have a team of people that you trust i think that's that's key that you trust you know they're you know that that's what i try and do i try and surround myself with people that are really good you know just as good as as i am or better than me you know so you can they elevate you that's so so important because i've been around people that are you know there's a lot of bad people out there as you know and especially in our industry you know a lot of bad people blood suckers and time wasters and all that kind of stuff so you just gotta find your close knit your connections your friends your contacts and just you know like a family and just keep working together that's kind of what i'm doing at the moment oh that's wonderful and i i totally agree with the experience of uh you know being a being an actor who wants to get into filmmaking or you know provide your own content when you are meeting people that is savvy to know when to walk away <laughs> you know when you know that uh they're literally pulling things out of their ass just to you know kind of get you into their own little own little world so it helps to be business savvy in that mindset and yeah being a, a producer i uh i tip my hat off to you because that is a lot of work but huh? the final product is is so worth it right 
oh yes, that's the most rewarding when you're sitting there. Uh, I had the um, the gala premiere a few weeks ago uh, in January, actually, um, of the Lair, and just seeing it with a typical audience in Leicester Square, and it was just amazing. Just laugh, people laughing and screaming, and just hearing everyone's reaction. That was just it's just it's like okay, yeah, that's why I do what I do. Okay, yeah, I get it now. That's so cool. That's really really cool. That is that is really cool. You could take that deep breath and go, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, one in the can, another one in the can. Like the one we just shot, the Duchess. That was, I would say, that was one of the hardest shoots yet because I mean, I got COVID during the production. The director got COVID. Um, it was just one of those films where, yeah, it was t- it was just tough 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 film and I thought I just need to get to the end of this and just make sure we're good and everything's in the can and we did and it's yeah the film will be finished in the next couple of weeks so super excited oh it's done it's in the can I can breathe (laughs) and now I'm doing the next one and now I'm going to put myself through it all over again (laughs) speaking of which I mean you've you've already dabbled in so many different genres and you know sub-genres what else do you want to work in as far as genre goes what's what's next on your list so the next one is a genre that I've never done before it is an erotic thriller so yes very very I've never done this before um I was inspired by the 80s 90s classic you know fatal attraction basic instincts um that kind of Genre. I mean, there were just so many great movies like that. And the giallo genre. Uh, it's, I've been watching a lot of giallo films lately. Um, you know, the, the killer with the, the black glove. Yeah. Well, that's a crazy <laughs> but, combo. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool compulsion. So everyone, all the actors have this compulsion that they can't, it's a compulsion, they, they can't control it. So it's, um, yeah, it's really, really cool. And we're shooting that in Malta in uh, April, May. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That. Yeah. It's been really interesting. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm just like trying to wrap my head around it because I love those different like mixings of genres. And that just sounds yeah. cool. I'm thinking of like, okay, body of evidence with like a giallo touch to it. That's insane. Or have you seen that body of evidence? I have to write that down. Is it good? I have to um, watch that. <laughs> It's very eighties. It's okay, but it's an it's an erotic thriller for sure. Uh, yeah, that type of film isn't necessarily you know it's not made that much anymore, right? So that'll be interesting no. to see, uh, you know, twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four take on that. Uh, wow, yeah, that's yeah, that really was crazy. Three three six five days. I know that did really well on Netflix. It's on like number two or three right now. Um, oh, what's that TV show? Oh, what's the name? It's, it's, it's kind of a, a thrillery, erotic, a, a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. White Lotus? Is it White Lotus? It could White be. Lotus. Actually, I haven't seen White Lotus. Yeah, I told to watch it. <laughs> sorry, <watched> listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yes. Oh, and I watched the other night uh, Perfect Murder, Michael Douglas. Great, classic. Yes. Brilliant. That's brilliant. It'd be, Brilliant. I mean, would there be any uh, desire to have someone of those previous films make a cameo in your film? Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> that would be great. Um, yes, there's lots of, um, lots of wheels spinning at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, we haven't got much time. We're filming in April, so, just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I I can't wait to check it out, much like Duchess as well. I I do want to see, you know, with your with your experience and with how well you've done with your career, do you have a party story you could share with our listeners? So not necessarily something that's happened at a party, but something that has taken place in your life that stands out so immensely you could easily recant it amongst friends at a party. Do you have something lined up for that? It could be comedic, tragic. It could be uh, scary. Just I think we're teetering more on comedic on this show, but anything that stands out to you? Oh, that's, let me see. That's a difficult one. Anything that's happened? Hmm. Hmm. 
I want to say comedic, but I'll just say on the previous film, The Lair, it's not really story. Like it's just I've never sh- I've never fired a gun before before I shot The Lair, so I was training um, to shoot an AK forty seven, and that was quite an experience in the shooting range. Um, and uh, everything was okay though. Everything was okay, but. I think uh, I can think of. Oh, I had a runaway horse. That was interesting on the reckoning. Never ridden, uh, ridden a horse before, and um, had some horse riding lessons. Absolutely great. First day of filming, got on this beautiful black beauty horse. First shot, first day. Right, I've got this. Get on the horse, and it gallops away. And I thought I was going to die and fall off the horse. I didn't, and I think I've used that shot in the film, but. That was pretty terrifying. And it was literally charging towards camera. And I don't know how I, I just held on to the love of God. It was pretty terrifying. I think the horse knew. It was like, right, okay, that's it. I'm gonna this I'm gonna set a standard here. <laughs> so I don't know. It was absolutely terrifying though. But I survived and I did get on the horse again. And um the horse did a great job, apart from that. <laughs> I'm no. sure did you did you keep your you know your your character's face on while that wave of fear was oh, coming <laughs> I absolutely did and that's the thing actually in Duchess I got shot with a blank I, I don't know if anyone ever has got shot well it's like it's like when you go paintballing but 10 times worse mm. and I actually got shot in the arm and it was absolutely excruciating but I carried on the scene I just, just just used it in the scene, ran as if it didn't happen. Then as soon as they said cut, I absolutely screamed of just, it was so painful. But then that's the thing with that. And then another, um, I was, the next day we were filming me in a swimming pool and it literally was ice cold. When I say ice cold, it I just couldn't like, I don't know how I did it. And I was swimming and you just saw the back of my head and I was going, fuck, fuck, oh my God, I can't do this. But you, but that's the only way I could survive. Me actually just, just literally spilling out my guts of just, I need to get out of this pool. I am about to die and I'm about, my fingers are about to fall off. But you can't see it. You see the back of my head just looking like left to right. But really, I'm absolutely screaming. It was horrendous. See, that's, that's the music of movies isn't it <laughs> the art <laughs> <discussion. laughs> it, it, it definitely sounds like you experienced the what is it called the Wim Hof method just spontaneously <laughs> you've just got to just go for it and uh, yeah you just, what else can you do you just got to do it um yeah and then on the reckoning there was another scenario where I'm cutting down my dead husband who's hanging from a tree with a sword and there's movie rain and as you know what movie rain's like it's pretty intense it's like a shower underneath you so I've got this big sword I can hardly see what I'm doing I'm swinging it and I'm swinging it and the director just shouted cut 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 I must have been this close to the stunt guy's head and it was a real sword but I couldn't see I was getting closer each time he couldn't see. He was just hanging there, bless him. And um, again, he survived. Everything's okay. And he's in the film. <laughs> oh but things that you just wouldn't know. I was like, thank <laughs> God he could survive. I couldn't see. It was movie rain and I was lost in the moment. And yeah, it was so a few along the way. But right now, okay. There's been no deaths. So. <laughs> Oh, say, I, I hope he doesn't shudder anytime you guys see each other now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh my God, get away from me. Has she got a sword? She's terrifying. <laughs> oh God. The stunt guys are absolutely incredible in like any movie. I just don't know how they do it. They're amazing. Oh, yeah. what a talent. Oof, what they do. I couldn't do it. Yeah, that it, it gives me major anxiety just standing, you know, in Video Village watching it. Okay. <gasps> I know. I hope this works out. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Oh my gosh, some of them. Oh, amazing. (sighs) Well, I think if anything, we've definitely established, you know, even in this episode that acting is an adventure. Pursuing this career is a crazy journey that will take years. It's just experience on top of experience. But I do want to see, you did share a little bit of advice before earlier in the episode, but if you have a personal piece of advice you could share with our listeners that you've held on to, that you could pass on to them.
I think you have to trust your gut, your instincts, right? Because you get so many people tell you different things. Do this, don't do that, or you don't try that. Try that if you, you know, it's because you think it's the right thing to do, go down this path, but do what you want to do. Follow what's in your heart. That's what I would say. And um, it doesn't matter who it is. If it's, I, th- I think you've just got to follow your heart and let your let your instincts guide you. I think that's what I've done. I yeah. love that. Yeah, and that it, it's it works for everybody, right? It's yeah. Someone who's been in the business for ten years, someone who's trying to start out. It, yeah, that's crazy important so thank you for sharing that and yeah, my you've got, go for, you, you've got to go with your instinct right because if you go yeah. oh I, I, okay I'm, I'm doing it because everyone's telling me to do it but i really don't want to do it don't do it because there's something telling you for a reason don't do it right yeah so yeah and, and that's and, and and you you choose that for a re- I, I i think so I've, I've learned from i've learned the hard way go with what you really feel deep down yeah. Yeah. And it's easy to tell that uh, difference between, you know, nerves, anxiety, and that gut feeling. It just, yeah. it's a punch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you're like, fuck, I should have listened to myself. I should have listened. I knew. I knew it, but I didn't listen. So yeah. that's, and just, just um, have good people around you as well. Mm. Good people. That's important. Quality people. It's better to have two or three quality good friends or good people around you than 10 or 15. Schweisters. <laughs> little good, you know, it's just no, nah, you just got you just need to have good people around you. That's so important. So, so important. And you know, if you think it you've got to follow your heart because if you don't, you're gonna end up doing something you don't want to do. And then what? You do something you don't want to do, and then you're gonna do then you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life. Right? Um, and then you're gonna be doing something just because for the wrong reasons, and that's not good that's not yeah and usually that's when the the i'm not a you know an astrology or cos cosmology person but that's usually when something that you love comes about i refrained from taking a day job recently that would be you know required uh work within an office setting and i went right up to a couple days before i was supposed to start and then i got an audition for something that i also got a call back for it's Amazing. just it, it, it's hilarious how that just pranks with your spirit. You're like, all right, fine, I'll just I'll stay in it. All right, <laughs> yeah. Listen to the signs. Listen yeah. to the signs. Amazing. Yeah. See, that's incredible. It was. That's really- it, oh, it's it's the the coolest thing. So I will constantly tell somebody. Yeah, I, I completely agree. If you love what you're doing, it's going to be tough. There are going to be days that are going to be yeah. the roughest days, but keep doing it. It's it's only going to help you to stay on that path. And, you know, with that, I do want to see, do you, um, like we have Duchess, right? But I wanted to see if there's any uh, any other upcoming projects or maybe some organizations you really care about that I could share uh, within the show notes of this episode. Oh, bless. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I'd love for you guys to check out The Lair. That's, uh, that's out. Uh, that's on Amazon, iTunes, um, Shudder. So that's that's The Lair out now. That's a sci-fi horror. Uh, it's like Predator meets the thing, I would say. Uh, the Reckoning, of course, that's been out for a while. Um, that's that was one of my first films that I, I um that I was that I produced and co-wrote. Um, and then yes, be on the lookout for Duchess and then about to shoot Compulsion. I am so excited for for Duchess and Compulsion. I haven't seen The Reckoning yet, but I watched The Lair when it came out on Shudder. And I just, I had to, I, I had so much fun with it. It was a complete blast. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun, exactly. It's just, yeah. it's, it's your uh, escapism, isn't it? It's just like from start to finish, you kind of hopefully get sucked into the story and the adventure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and definite Sigourney Weaver vibes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure if you were going for that, but it it totally hit. Like, I'm I'm in. Let's let's just watch this. I'm totally in. <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, I think it, it was so much fun to make. And I think that translates on screen, you know, Mm. it was, um, it was just, it's just a fun movie. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up the recording here. uh, Cause I know I went over on time just a little bit, but uh, I do like to do what we call an awkward goodbye in each recording. So I'm not Uh, sure if you're familiar, but have you ever seen uh, Wayne's World? 
I haven't. Okay. That's really no, 80% of my guests on the show have maybe seen it once years ago or haven't seen it at all. So explaining it is always just, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm still tinkering with it a hundred and something episodes later. Uh, <laughs> but essentially, uh, they are, you know, this public access show to metalhead best buds. And they are bought out by this corporation that changes their production immensely. So the main guy leaves and then Garth, his right hand man, is left on stage with the camera rolling. And is just muttering nonsense, scared out of his mind, not knowing what to do. So oh, <laughs> our awkward goodbye consists of me counting down from three, two, one silently. And then when I point to you, you give us your best verbal awkward goodbye. And then I will stop the recording from there. Does that sound like fun? Let's go for it. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> awkward goodbye in... Bye.